All right. Since we'll be uh, covering unit testing in our upcoming videos and uh, series, I think it might be good to demystify uh, some testing jargon used in the testing world. So for today, we are going to uh, focus uh, on test doubles. And in this video, we're going to talk about stubs, mocks, and spies. You'll generally hear people using the term mock to refer to all of these. However, there are some differences between them, and uh, this is what we are going to see. First, let's define what a test double is. So simply put, it's a substitute of an object. I see you coming. Uh, you might be wondering why replacing an object by a test double. Uh, well, because sometimes we don't want to hit the real implementation in our test. And um, yeah, just let's give an analogy. Let's say that we are testing uh, the logging feature of, um, of a system or of uh, an app, right? Where the user fill, fill in his email and his password and then hit the login button. Uh, and uh, after hitting the login button, a method in the view model is called, and behind the scene, we just perform an HTTP request, right? Uh, which is uh, really classic. The problem testing something like that directly without any test double is that your test becomes tied to the external world. Um, what if you have a slow internet connectivity? That means um, your test will. Uh, will be slow as well, which is not great when we unit test because we want our feedback loop to be as quickly as possible, right? Or uh, what if you don't have any internet connectivity or the server is not responding? Hopefully not. But yeah, um, you can see that sometimes by testing real implementation, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. That's why in those kind of situations, it is better to use a, a test double and isolate any side effect. The first test double we are going to see is stub. Uh, these are really easy to understand. Basically, you'll return hard-coded values to the calls uh, performed during the test. Let's see an example. All right. So I have here a login view model I would like to test, but just before that, uh, let's see uh, what is inside this uh, view model. So we have uh, some combined uh, publisher um, and a login service uh, as a dependency uh, that we use here, that we initialize here in the initializer. Let's see what is a login service. Like it is just a protocol with one method inside, uh, one uh, attempt, lo attempt login inside. And um, here in, uh, in the view model, we, we do have a login, um, a login method as well. And uh, this login method is a sync and is going to call the uh, attempt login of that login service. Uh, if we scroll down, we do have here a default implementation of this login service. Um, and uh, it is just going basically to make uh, an HTTP uh, request. Here we uh, use the URL session to, to do so. And uh, if, uh, yeah, we just decode the data. If uh, it is not successful, we just throw an error. Uh, if that is the case, uh, we return the token, right? And uh, the token is just a simple struct with the value and the expiry date. Now that uh, we saw uh, the implementation of this login view model, I would like to write some, uh, some tests for that. Okay, so we are talking, uh, we are still talking about uh, stub and uh, I do have, uh, I do want to uh, test this view model, but I want to test the unhappy path, like uh, when the network uh, layer throws an error, I do want to test that and uh, make sure that uh, this property on my view model is set. So we can see here that uh, 
it is nil for now but uh, when this is throwing an error i do want that error to be uh, that error field to be uh, mutated and uh, receive this error that has been uh, thrown so let's write a test for that let me quickly uh, pass the test name uh, so uh, i do prefer uh, for my test at least to use a uh, snake case so uh, feel free uh, to revert to a uh, camel case whatever you like um so i'm just going uh let's see first what we are trying to uh, to test here uh we do want uh, to test the unhappy path right like uh, we are testing that uh, we want to test that uh, this um this error is set whenever uh, an error is thrown from uh, the network layer uh and for that we are going to use a stub right and uh for the stub uh let's stub first the protocol so i'm going to create uh some stubs uh for for that and uh here they are okay so we have a first stub okay uh for the happy path and another one for the unhappy path the sad path and like I told you, uh, a stub is just a hard coded return it value, right? So here for the token, we uh, return a hard coded uh, token value with a GWT token and uh, an expiry date of um, 30 minutes, okay, half an hour. And uh, for the unhappy path, we just throw an error, okay? And now we can use this in our test. Okay, so we are going to say something like this. Okay, once we have that, we can call uh, the login. Okay, let's read them, and we can here assert that uh, the error is not nil. So that error is not nil. All right, so we have here our first test, right? Uh, and uh, here for the login view model, uh, we accept just uh, a stub as a login service here. And for that stub, we uh, we do uh, say that uh, it is the sat path, okay. And uh, we called the login of the view model, and we are asserting asserting indeed that the error is not nil. Let's test that and see what we have. All right, the test is passing. So uh, you, you can see that uh, we won't need to uh, directly uh, go uh, make an HTTP uh, request. And now let's write a test for uh, the happy path. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste. Um, okay, so here we test that uh, the token field is not nil when the a API sent a successful response. So we do the same, basically, um, create a login view model and uh, that accept a login service happy uh, path stub here uh, uh, as a service. Uh, we call the login and uh, we are asserting that uh, the, uh, the token is not nil and that the, its value is equal to GWT token, which is right here. So let's test that as well and we still have green so uh which is really cool uh so here we uh we did use a stub in order to uh to not call directly uh the the default implementation which is um uh here the um uh this method doing the http call right so um as you can see uh stubs are really dumb uh, just simple value, hard coded value, return it that you can use directly in your test. So now let's talk about um, mocks. We saw that uh, stubs are kind of dumb, right? Uh, you call a method and uh, you get back a response you pre configure uh, like, uh, like these, right? And um, so mocks act 
uh, like uh, stubs in a sense they can uh, also return uh, this kind of uh, fake data for your test but uh, they go beyond that mox can allow you to save uh, all the interaction made with the object and uh, make assertions afterwards so let's see uh, an example so i'm going to do the exact same thing um i've created uh, some mocks here okay and uh, at first glance you see that uh, it returns uh, some um, some fake data uh, just like uh, the stub but uh, it can save some interactions as well so for this uh, mock i have an error field and uh, a login code uh, and whenever i call here attempt uh, login i increment that uh, login uh, called by uh, by one and here for the sat path and uh, i have here uh, also the login called which is incremented and i um, throw here an error uh, which is uh, of type ns error so now uh, let's use this uh, mock in our test. I'm going to copy and paste some code. Okay. So the first one is uh, uh, I am testing the attempt uh, login is called just once, right? So I uh, um, I create here uh, an object which is uh, the login service happy uh, path mock. Okay and uh, i uh, create a view model and uh, pass that uh, mock and i uh, uh, call the login so like i did previously uh, i've created um, uh, a mock and uh, pass that mock to um, uh, to the view model uh, call the login uh, method on the view model and now i can make here some assertion like i can make some assertion that uh, this login has been called once right like uh, here uh, we increment it uh, whenever we uh, call this attempt login so let's test that and it passes right now uh, let's try to uh, to make this test fail like if i am about to call right this um, uh this thing twice let's see here if i call it twice uh and uh we run this test again we are going that uh, we are going to see that uh, it fails so and we have that uh, assertion that uh, saying that uh, uh this uh this method has been called twice right and uh which is uh that attempt to login has been called twice, which is true. Okay, let me revert back and uh, test it again, and uh, it passes. So uh, the main difference is that uh, with mocks you have uh, a session, uh, and uh, with um, stub you are just returning some uh, some uh, fake data. Now uh, let me maybe uh, test the uh, unhappy path as well before moving on to uh, the spies right here we are exactly doing the same uh, with the sat path here and uh, yeah so the login called must be one and uh, uh, the error must not be nil this time right since we have here um, a sat path here and let's see that we can see that the sat path is just throwing an error okay for that mock and we are going to uh, to listen uh, to these uh, values so let's see here right and uh, it is passing so uh, basically uh, that is all about mocks they can uh, they are uh, stub in a certain way but uh, they can save some interaction that you can use to make some uh, assertion now let's talk about spies as the name suggests, spies spy on a dependency. Uh, they wrap uh, themselves around the real object and uh, observe it, uh, its behavior. Let's give another example uh, to illustrate all that. So I'm going to 
create here a spy. I'm just going to copy and paste and uh, see here. So, uh, like I said, uh, for a spy, we we are going to record all the interaction of uh, the object under under test. So here you can uh, still see uh, the error and uh, uh, this login called um, count. Uh, you can find as well uh, on the mock. And we do have uh, some received arguments and uh, received invocation, right? And uh, we are and here we can see that uh, it is still returning uh, a fake uh, a fake object. Now let's write a test for that spy. So uh, where is the test? So right here. I'm just going to pass, paste some code. All right. So here I initialize the the spy and uh, pass it to the login uh, view model. Um, so for the view model, I said that. Uh, the email, the email is uh, hello at gmail.com and for the password it is just password i call here um the login um the login uh, method on the view model and now i can make some assertions right so uh, i can assert that the login uh, called account is equal to one um i can uh, also um Asset the received invocation, uh, the count to be equal to one, and uh, that the received argument, the email is uh, hello at gmail.com, and that the password here is our password as well. So let's test that first. And uh, yeah, so we see that uh, it is going to pass, and let's make it fail. I'm just going to call this a second time and uh, rerun the test again. And we are going to see that, uh, yeah, so it is failing. So we have this login count, which is uh, equal to two now, right? Yes. And uh, this received invocation is equal to two as well. Okay. So let me revert back and delete. The second call and uh, maybe test again. There we go. So now all tests are passing, and uh, yeah. So this is basically uh, what a what a spy is. So uh, registering it it is going to uh, to uh, to listen for all the interaction made uh, within this object. Okay. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, test doubles, including uh, stubs, mocks, and spies, are really useful tools in our tool belt to uh, isolate a test from uh, external dependencies and to allow for faster and more reliable testing, right? We saw that uh, stubs uh, are just some uh, hard-coded uh, return values. Uh, mocks allow for the saving and assertion of uh, interactions. And uh, spies observe and uh, record the behavior of dependencies, uh, like here. So, uh, understanding uh, the difference between uh, these types of test double can help improve the effectiveness of uh, unit testing. And I hope that uh, this video will help you in that uh, regard. So, uh, see you next time.